Since the dawn of civilizations, money has become a powerful tool. It is the engine that drives our world. It is the key to every economy and the source of great power. But what happens when some people use it for their own twisted purposes? Stay tuned as we dive into the world of financial crime. In this video, we will reveal and uncover the most notorious financial criminals that shocked the world and went on to great lengths to carry out their illegal activities. These individuals have taken greed to a whole new level, breaking the law and causing chaos that sends shockwaves through economies worldwide. At number 5. Tom Petters Born in 1956, he was an American businessman and financier. Petters was convicted in 2009 for fraud, conspiracy, and money laundering. From the beginning, he had always claimed that he was innocent and that others in the company were behind the scheme. That is until today. He was the founder and CEO of Petters Group Worldwide, a company that was involved in various businesses, including consumer electronics and real estate. Petters' businesses involved convincing investors that their money would be used to purchase consumer electronics and other goods, which would then be sold for a profit. In reality, the money was used to pay earlier investors and support Petters' lavish lifestyle. Petters was also known for his philanthropy and community involvement. He made large donations to various organizations and was even recognized by some as a businessman of the year. Petters' fraudulent activities were initially discovered in 2008 when several investors claimed that they had not received returns on their investments. An investigation was launched and it was discovered that Petters had been running a Ponzi scheme for over a decade. Petters' scheme eventually collapsed, and in 2009, he was found guilty of 20 counts of fraud, money laundering, and conspiracy. He was sentenced to 50 years in federal prison and ordered to pay $3.65 billion in restitution to his victims. The collapse of Petters' Ponzi scheme resulted in many individuals losing their savings and retirement funds. The case was one of the largest frauds in American history. Petters' criminal activities and the fallout from his Ponzi scheme were widely covered by the media and have been the subject of several books and documentaries. At number 4. Jordan Belfort Born in the Bronx, New York City in 1962. Once I get rich and I get my powerful, then I'll feel good. Belfort was a stockbroker and the founder of Stratton Oakmont a securities firm which was a boiler room that engaged in pump and dump schemes. In the late 80s and early 90s, Belfort defrauded investors out of hundreds of millions of dollars through the sale of worthless stocks. He became infamous for his unethical sales practices. In addition to his illegal activities in the stock market, Belfort was also known for his lavish lifestyle, which included excessive drug use, partying, and spending. Belfort's high-pressure sales tactics and illegal practices eventually caught up with him, and in 1999 he pleaded guilty to fraud and related crimes of stock market manipulation as well as running a penny stock scam. Belfort served 22 months in federal prison and was ordered to pay 50% of his income in restitution to over 1,500 clients he deceived up until 2009, with a total of $110 million in additional mandatory compensation. But his infamy only grew as his case was turned into a best-selling book and his story was depicted in the 2013 film The Wolf of Wall Street, which starred Leonardo DiCaprio as Belfort. The film was based on Belfort's memoir of the same name, which details his experiences in the stock market and his downfall, solidifying his place as one of the most notorious financial criminals in history. At number 3, Alan Stanford born in March 1950 in Mexia, Texas. This was not a Ponzi scheme. Never in my life have I ever set out to defraud a person. Never. Never have we done anything that I'm not proud of. Never have we done anything to the best of my knowledge. He was a billionaire, a former financier, and a businessman. Alan Stanford started a banking business in the West Indies in the 1980s as part of Stanford Financial Group a group of companies with operations in the Americas, Europe, and the Caribbean. His company grew into a massive conglomerate that claimed to provide wealth management, investment banking, and asset management services. Stanford's fraud was operated through Stanford International Bank, or SIB, an offshore bank based in Antigua. The scheme involved the sale of certificates of deposits, or CDs, to investors, who were promised high returns. Instead of investing the money as promised, 
Stanford used it to fund his lavish lifestyle and pay returns to early investors, which is the hallmark of a Ponzi scheme. In 2009, FBI agents located Stanford at his girlfriend's house near Fredericksburg, Virginia, and served him with civil legal papers filed by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Stanford was accused of misusing billions of dollars and defrauded thousands of investors. He was arrested for his involvement in a massive Ponzi scheme and fraud scandal and his empire collapsed. In 2012, Stanford was found guilty of 13 out of 14 charges of fraud, conspiracy, and obstruction of justice, and was sentenced to 110 years in federal prison in order to pay back over $7 billion to the victims of his fraud. The collapse of the scheme caused significant losses for thousands of investors, and Stanford's conviction and incarceration was seen as one of the largest Ponzi schemes in history. At number two, Bernie Madoff the mastermind of the largest Ponzi scheme New York has ever seen. There is no way you can run a $50 billion Ponzi scheme and not have anybody else know about it. From the ritzy streets of New York City to the dingy halls of a federal prison, the name Bernie Madoff is synonymous with one of the largest and most notorious financial frauds in history. Bernard Lawrence Madoff was born in Queens, New York in 1938. He started his career as a stockbroker in the 1960s and eventually founded his own investment firm, Bernie L. Madoff Investment Securities, in the 1970s, which grew into one of the largest market-making firms in the world. He also became chairman of the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. For decades, Madoff presented himself as a successful and trustworthy investment advisor. But in reality, he was running a massive Ponzi scheme that conned thousands of investors out of billions of dollars. Despite warnings from financial experts and regulatory authorities, Madoff continued to attract new investors and grow his scheme until it finally collapsed in 2008. The fallout was devastating for many of Madoff's victims, who lost their life savings, and for the reputation of the financial industry as a whole. He was arrested for his fraudulent operation that defrauded thousands of investors. Bernie Madoff's scheme targeted wealthy individuals, charities, and institutional investors. He was sentenced to 150 years in prison in order to pay restitution of $170 billion, making it one of the largest financial frauds in recorded history. And at number one on our list of the worst financial frauds in history, the man who started it all, Charles Ponzi. That if you throw enough numbers at people, their eyes will glaze over and they will think you know what you're talking about. Born in Italy in 1882, Charles Ponzi immigrated to the United States in 1903 in pursuit of the American dream. By 1919, Ponzi had settled in Boston and was on the hunt for a new business venture. It was then that he came up with the idea that would make him infamous. Ponzi promised high returns on investments with little to no risk. He promised to double investors' money in 90 days by exploiting the differences in foreign exchange rates. It all seemed too good to be true, and it was. Ponzi's scheme was a huge success, attracting thousands of investors and making him millions of dollars. However, as more and more people invested, it became clear that there was no actual business behind Ponzi's promises. In 1920, Ponzi's scheme finally collapsed, leaving thousands of people broke and the government to investigate. It was discovered that Ponzi had been using the money from new investors to pay off old ones, creating a never-ending cycle. Ponzi was arrested and sentenced to prison for his crimes, he died bankrupt in Brazil in 1949, leaving behind a legacy of deceit and a warning for future generations. Charles Ponzi may have been one of the most successful con artists of all time, but his actions have forever left a stain on the world of finance. Don't be blindsided by the promise of easy money. Always do your research and be cautious of any too-good-to-be-true investments. These are just a few of the most notorious financial criminals in history. While their actions were reprehensible, they serve as a reminder of the importance of transparency and ethical behavior in the world of finance. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, kindly subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for our next short true crime stories. See you there.